Hello, and welcome back to the story. Today we will be making a recap on a 2007 movie titled The Mist. The story begins with an artist who is hand-painting a poster of a movie. His studio has a collection of his other works. The lights suddenly go out and when he and his family check outside, they see the storm has arrived and they go to the basement. A tree slams through their window hitting his new painting. The next day, David, together with his son Billy and his wife Steph, checks the damage caused by the storm. Their boathouse has been crushed by a huge tree of their neighbor. Across the lake, they notice a thick mist approaching. David thinks it is just a leftover of the storm, so they ignore it. David goes to his neighbor Brent to talk about his tree that crushed David's boathouse. David sees that a tree has also crushed Brent's car. Brent later tells David he will give him his insurance number. David drives to town with his son and Brent hitches a ride with him. On their way to town, they see some electric company trucks, but later, they see military vehicles going opposite their way. Brent thinks it is the Arrowhead Project and talks about the conspiracy stories on that military base. Brent just laughs. They arrive at the supermarket and David finds out his phone has no signal, and the payphone nearby does not work. The store is jammed up with people who are also stocking up on supplies. The store also has no electricity, and the backup generator is only used for keeping the food cold. Three on-leave soldiers arrive in the store. Later, a military policeman tells the soldiers that their leave has been suspended and they have to get back to the base immediately. A bloodied man named Dan gets inside the store and shouts, something in the mist is taking people away. He tells them to shut the doors, but someone still runs outside to his car. The mist catches him, and later, everyone hears him scream, so they hurriedly close the door. Everybody just stares at the mist that has completely engulfed outside. Suddenly, the ground shakes and everyone ducks as some ceiling materials and lights fall off. After the shaking has stopped, a woman got worried of her kids that she left at home. She asks everybody to accompany her, but no one wants to go outside. Despite everyone's protest, she still decides to go out alone. As they sit in the store aisle, Mrs. Repler introduces the teacher who is new in town named Amanda. The store clerk beside David and his son is Sally. David goes to the back room and finds the generator to be smoking and turns it off. David then hears banging on the loading dock door and something big seems to be pushing it from the outside. He runs back to the store and tells Jim and the guys about it, but they don't believe him. The guys turn on the generator, but it smokes again. They find out that something is blocking the exhaust from the outside. The bag boy named Norm volunteers to go outside and take out what's clogging the exhaust. David warns them not to because the thing he heard outside might come in if they open the door, but they still don't believe him. Jim warns David to stop his nonsense story and calls him a coward. As they open the loading dock door, they laugh at David because nothing seems to be outside but then a tentacle grabs Norm's foot and David tries to pull him back. The other guys were frozen in fear and did not help except for Ollie. Norm screams in pain as the tentacle takes off part of his skin and he is dragged again into the mist. David closes the door, and the creature decides to leave but David manages to cut one tentacle with an axe. Jim apologizes to David and David punches him for having the bag boy killed. David tells them to go back to the store and asks Ollie to turn off the generator. Back at the grocery, they tell Brent about the tentacles that they saw. However, Brent thinks that they are playing a prank on him. They get into an argument as David tries to bring him back door to see the tentacles. To stop everyone from trying to go out into the mist, David tells everyone about the creature with tentacles that dragged off Norm and Dan confirms it. However, the store manager and Brent laugh and say that it is all a lie and a lunacy. David then brings the store manager to the back door and shows him the tentacles. The tentacle still moves when touched by a broom, but then it starts to die off and melt. They go back and the store manager confirms what David and the guys saw. Everyone starts to secure and barricade the glass window. Meanwhile, Mrs. Carmody starts preaching, saying the end time has come, the bag boy is just the first one of the sacrifices. Amanda slaps her, but Mrs. Carmody does not stop. Mrs. Carmody warns them that there will be more sacrifices tonight and they will later beg her for her guidance. 
Dan asks the store manager if there is a gun in the store, but the manager says no. An old man says he has a shotgun at his truck, but David tells him not to go out and get it. Amanda then shows a pistol in her bag that her husband has given her. Ollie takes it saying he knows how to use it. Brent organizes a group to leave the store and look for rescue. David asks Brent if he could at least tie a rope in his body so they would know if it would be safe to go outside. He refuses and another man volunteers to tie the rope because he will be going out to get the shotgun on the truck. Brent and his group start to leave and the other man with the rope follows. David and the guys try to keep the rope loose until it is suddenly pulled fast. They try hard to pull the rope back, but it suddenly snaps. When they pull it back, the rope is now covered in blood and the man's lower body is what's left tied to it. Everyone screams and they decide to cut the rope and leave the body outside. That night, the men guard the barricade and sees a big insect that hits the glass, and they later find out that there are more of them outside. Then suddenly, huge pterodactyl-like birds appear taking the insects one by one. Each time they attack an insect, the birds create cracks on the glass window making everyone terrified. Eventually, the glass breaks open and the insects start to get inside. One insect bites Sally and she starts to have seizure and eventually succumbs. Two birds have also gotten inside. One bird bite off a man's neck and David attacks and defeats it using fire. Another man puts a mop to fire but tripped and gets burned. An insect lands on Mrs. Carmody's stomach but does not bite her. This makes her believe more that she is the chosen one. Ollie manages to shoot down the other bird in the store. After the chaos, they finally manage to cover the glass back. Some of them start to believe and follow Mrs. Carmody because her predictions came true that someone would die that night. Joe, who is severely burned after accidentally setting himself on fire, wants to end his life but David tells him to hang on as they will work something out. Meanwhile, Amanda who is taking care of David's son finds Hattie lifeless after intentionally overdosing from a pill. David tells the men that Joe badly needs antibiotics and strong painkillers for his burn. They are thinking about going to the pharmacy next door. After what happened with the bird and insects, David suggests that they should get out of the store permanently because they won't know what to do if the big creatures decide to break the glass windows. Amanda interrupts the men and tell them what happened to Hattie. Joe tells Amanda about their plan to leave the store after getting supplies from the pharmacy. His plan is to drive his SUV that could hold eight people as far as the fuel takes them. David bids farewell to his son as they will be leaving for the pharmacy and his son cries worrying. David leaves him to Amanda's care and gives Amanda the key to his car. David and some of the men starts to leave and Mrs. Repler comes with them because she knows that pharmacy well. They reach the pharmacy unscathed and take the necessary medicines. Dan hears something and tells them to hurry up. They find people strung up in spiderwebs and one man is still alive. He is the military policeman who went to the store earlier. The military policeman screams and asks forgiveness saying it is their fault. They try to take off the webs from him but he suddenly shakes, and spiders go out of his head. Jim screams as he sees a big spider and Ollie shoots it with a pistol. David is able to dodge a web string. It turns out that the web is made of acid, and it burns the floor as it falls. More spiders come out and shoot more acid web. A web string hits and burns Bobby's legs. More spiders go out of the military policeman's body, and one is able to shoot one of the men directly on the face. Mrs. Repler managed to burn one of the spiders using spray and fire. As they are about to leave, Bobby finally succumbs, and they leave him. The spider then feasted on his body. The men finally arrive back at the store screaming and terrified. The next day, David wakes up after passing out the whole day, and Ollie tells him that Joe finally succumbs from his burns. Mrs. Carmody now has almost everyone follow her, even Jim. After what happened to Bobby and Mike at the pharmacy, David now hesitates to go on with his plan to leave the store. But his group are starting to worry about Mrs. Carmody and her followers, so they convince David to carry on with his plan to leave. Curious about what the military policeman meant by saying it is their fault, they go to Private Jessup and asks him, but he says he know nothing about the mist. The group look for Jessup's other companion and they find them hanging lifeless in the loading dock. 
David asks if the mist has something to do with the Arrowhead project but gets interrupted by Jim who takes away Private Jessup and brings him to Mrs. Carmody and her followers. Jim tells them that it was them, the military, to blame of what is happening. After being threatened by Mrs. Carmody, Private Jessup finally reveals that the scientists had found a way to open a window to other dimensions. They accidentally ripped a hole open where the creatures from the other world come in. Mrs. Carmody says that they are punished for destroying the secrets of life and the creatures attacking them are from hell. She insists that it is Private Jessup's fault and Mrs. Carmody's followers beat and stab him. She then shouts to feed him to the beast. David tries to help him, but his group stops him. They throw Jessup outside and the creature takes him away. Mrs. Carmody then tells them that the beast will leave them for the night, but more sacrifices might be needed for the coming days. Later, Billy asks his father to promise him that he won't let the monster get him no matter what. David agrees and promises him. Dawn has arrived and Amanda wakes David up so they can already carry on with their plan to leave. When they are about to get the groceries that Ollie has prepared, they find out that they are missing. When David looks up, he sees Mrs. Carmody carrying a knife. She says she won't allow them to leave. David and his group are now surrounded by Mrs. Carmody's followers. She tells them that the next sacrifice would be David's son. David and his group try to fight back but Mrs. Carmody continues shouting and tells her followers to kill all of them. She suddenly got shot and put down by Ollie. Everybody backs off as Ollie points the gun. They finally were able to leave the store and reach the parking lot. But they are attacked by the creatures. The only ones left and got safely to the car were David and his son, Amanda, Dan, and Mrs. Repler. David is able to take the gun left by Ollie and they finally drive away. The survivors inside the store stare outside as David's car passes by. They arrive at David's house and he finds his wife covered in spider web. David is devastated. David then decides to continue driving until where the fuel can take them. Amanda is hopeful that they can make it out of the mist. On the road, they see a much larger creature which creates an earthquake as it walks. As they continue driving, the fuel reaches empty, and they finally stop in the middle of nowhere. They have lost all their hopes and David looks at his passengers like they have come to an agreement. There are five of them in the car but there are only four bullets left in the gun. David says he will figure something out. Billy wakes up and we can hear four gunshots inside the car. David cries and screams. He gets out of the car and calls the creatures to take him and end his life. He later hears a rumbling sound and David is ready to die. But it turns out to be a military tank and a battalion of soldiers followed by a truck carrying other survivors, which includes the lady who went out of the store alone to get her children. David is shattered realizing he put down his son and his other companions for nothing. The movie ends with the mist completely cleared. More other survivors are being rescued and the military men are burning the remains of the creatures. Did you like our movie recap? Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. To be updated for new movie recaps, hit the notification bell.